Hard glass is quite a bijou marina. It's quite tight around its area, so you don't get lots of room, but there is enough room for big boats and small boats alike to move in and out. Um, so you just stay close to the pontoons and away from the rocks, and soon as you get to the voyage, it's only five minutes and you're out at sea, so you need to be fairly handy getting your fenders and your lines away as quick as you can, because obviously conditions can be a little bit bumpy just outside, depending on the weather. Well, today, the weather's a pretty much similar picture of yesterday. It's two to four from the east, and hopefully we'll have the same sort of pace going up the coast. We're going to punch the first hour or two of tide, as we did last time, and then we should carry the flood all the way up. But I think we're a little bit handy today, and we've more, got more like three hours of tide to punch before it turns in our favour. One last look back to our glass marina there, and we're off. As soon as we've passed the Cardinal, we're out here, motoring into the bumpy stuff to get out. Well, there's always a little bit bumpy after every single inlet for some reason just to get out, but we seem to have no wind at the moment, or what there is, it seems like it's coming round on the nose that's not going to help us. So, we did plan on motoring for quite a bit to pick the wind up, to tell you the truth, because it's an easterly today, more so than a southeasterly. Well, we're starting off here at Ardglass and we're going to make our way up here to Bangor. The wind is in this direction across here. So as you can see, we're not going to be able to sail into that very well in the first place. So that leaves us with a plan to motor up to this boy here. And when we get to this boy here, then we should have a favourable tack to take us the rest of the way. Other people have a very similar plan to ourselves. There's three boats out in all. This is us passing the uh, opening to um, Strangford Loch. It can be a bit bumpy outside Strangford Loch, so we've stayed out to the fairway boy. Here's the fairway boy for Strangford. So we know when we've passed that, then we've passed any chance of bumpy water as well. But we've stayed well out just in case. It's quite a motor we have to do, but then the seas are relatively flat and there's very little air on them at all. And if we were going the other way, we'd be ghosting, I'm quite sure. Well, we're not going the other way, so we'll have to entertain ourselves in any way we can. There's a little bit of camera work from downstairs. And not that it makes any difference where you're taking the pictures from. They're all the same. It's still a flat sea. But then a little bit of excitement. There's a boat coming the other way. And he's actually sailing. As you can see from his foresail, there's nothing in that because it's shielded by the main. But he looks like he's making a fair pace. But he looks like he's got a good waterline length as well. Well, you can see the water's got a tiny little bit more life on it because there's a little bit more air. And that boy there, that's the South Rock boy. That's the one where we change our course. We're not right on it and it's very much zoomed in at the moment because we're about two miles from it. So that was why it was a little bit wobbly and a little bit blurry. But everything works to plan. As soon as we pass the boy and we change our course, our sails fill and we're off. We're off and sailing, which is exactly what we want. Lisa's made up, she's made up the engine's gone off, so she says we're going to celebrate by having a nice bacon butty. So she's getting on with that now, look, there's the proceeds starting. And I can smell that bacon, ooh, you know when you can smell that bacon and your belly rumbles. There it is, it's only minutes away. Well, I've finished my bacon butty now, and I tell you, man, that hit the spot. So two things are singing now, I've got a full tummy and I've got a full set of sails. Who could possibly ask for more? Well, we've got 11, 12 knots of wind and we're making 4.7 over the ground and we're doing about the same through the water and that's because now's the slack water time. Well, if the wind remains the same now, light airs obviously, they should actually pick our speed over ground up as we go along. We're doing well actually, I think, at the moment anyway. Swallow's pumping good and she seems to be sailing, sailing really well in the light airs with her clean bottom. Made a massive difference. And it made a big difference of her going to windward as well when I took those big clumpy weights off the rudder. So I, th I think I'm ticking loads of boxes on, with my maintenance side of things and it's paying dividends in the sailing side of it. I mean, this is 10 knots of apparent wind. 10 knots of apparent wind, which means we're pushing a little bit of ourselves. 
and she seems to be absolutely creaming along. So much so that it's very enjoyable and it's going to be a class voyage if it stays like this right round to Bangor now. She feels very powered up at the moment and she looks it. She looks like she's punching away brilliantly through the water. I wonder what statistics we've got. We've got 4.75 through the water on 12 knots. And here we are, just after our boy. And we're doing five knots over the ground, over five knots over the ground, nearly five and a half. So we've got a little bit of um, ebb going with us now, taking us north. We haven't used the wind gear much for steering on this trip so far because we tried it on the channel when we were crossing and there's something sticking a little bit on it. So I've left it off and we've just been running on the um, electric auto helm for now. But that's okay. It stays a good course on the Lecky Auto Helm and she's ploughing along where we want to go. There's nothing in the world I'd rather be doing than sitting on Swallow at this moment in time. Slipping up the coast, lovely. The weather outside though, it's still a little cool. I'd say we're on best of the temperatures of the day at around 14 degrees Celsius. And when you're sitting there in the draft, it can cool you down. I think this little fella's called the school mountain boy and uh, as we start passing him the wind starts getting really light but we're not going to give up you've still got eight knots on the beam and we've got six miles to get to Donagadee uh, Sound so we want to try and sail all our way there We've still got three over through the water, but we've got good over the ground now because we're in the mid-ebb. So that's plenty of speed to get anywhere at the end of the day, isn't it? Swallow seems to have got out of her groove a little bit and she's just sort of bobbing along. She's making headway, but she doesn't feel like she's got a great big smile on her face. She just feels happy that she's going. The sails are only just filled and only just holding themselves up and the little flag there, well that won't even raise. But as long as we're moving I'm happy. At less than seven knots of wind most of the time now, two and a half knots through the water. Not brilliant I know, but we've still got over four most of the time over the ground. And as long as these figures keep up we'll get somewhere, less than five miles to go to the sound. It's coming slowly and the sun's back out and that makes things nicer. The sea's getting really flat, almost like bin bags, but not quite there yet. But we're still sailing. Swallow never stops surprising us. We've hardly got any wind whatsoever, and she can be six knots of wind, and with her clean backside, she's still slipping along. She's still making bubbles, and she's still taking you from A to B. And that's why other boats, which are classed as sailing boats, where we're sort of classed in the motor sailor bracket, other boats give up, they down the sails, and there they are, down in the sails and motoring along. While we've still got sailing happening up from Swallow, that's pretty good. All that power there lost. Well, maybe he's in a real big hurry and he doesn't want to take his time, but I think with the tide going with us, I think it's really enjoyable. So here we are. Almost in Donagadi Sound. We've still got speed over the ground, but the current's dragging us along. We've still got seven knots of wind. And amazingly, we've still got 2.7 through the water, which is pretty damn good, isn't it? And that little island there is Copeland Island, which marks the outside of the sound. Now, if there was a little bit more wind, I'd be happy to carry my sails right through the sound. But I think just as we get up to the sound, I'm going to start the donkey and down the sails because there could be some fast moving currents in here and the sails won't get us out of trouble quick enough and I don't want to get into trouble in the first place so I'll let the engine do the work so motor on and let's get that you know what away
as we enter into the sound the voyage is quite clear because it's a nice clear day and the sea is quite flat which helps you very easily to be able to spot them that's Donegadee Harbour over there you can see the two walls with the inlet in the middle you can see boats all sitting in the inside that's a good stop off spot if you were only stopping off for a day I think to cross five knots that's on the engine 7.6 over the ground that's the current little bit of wind there Copeland Island over there and Donagadi Sound just ahead of us there you can see the port and boy to the port and the starboard and boy over there to the starboard and there's two of each and you can actually make out just about make out the colours red and green you can see when you get close to the voyage that the water's ripping past it. It's doing about three knots at the moment past it, so we're going through with a bit of help. Um, the water's lovely at the moment, but if you put a wind against this, I'm quite sure it'd be capable of standing up in here with three knots and, say, I don't know, 25, 30 knots of wind going the other way. I'm quite sure it'd be a well bumpy ride. As you exit the sound, you've got to avoid a rock called South Briggs. And there's a cardinal boy, which is placed so that you know exactly where it is you need to clear. The cardinal boy just comes up to the right of the screen in a sec. And the next thing that sticks out on your port side as you're going down the locks then, Bally McCormick Point. Behind that is the home of the Bally Home Yacht Club. And just after you've passed the yacht club, you'll see the marina come into view in the distance. It's got quite a big marina wall and there's a lot of town around it, so you know you're in the right place. And as with the rest of the locks you see around here, there's a lot of shipping involved in it as well. So you've got to consider the shipping should you be crossing the lock. Stay out of the way. Incidentally, just ahead of the marina, I seen anchorages on the chart, and I thought, well, if you're going to anchor just outside the marina, you need a fairly good anchor light, don't you? As you want to be seen. There's the marina wall and there's a port and buoy on the end of it to let you know you've got to go around it. It's a hell of a size of the marina wall when you're coming up on the outside of it. A lot of colourful houses there on the front so you know exactly where you are. You can see the port and marker quite clearly there on the end of the wall so you've got to go around that. Note those rocks. So we'll be giving them rocks a wide bear. So I expect you will do the same thing as well. Lisa calls up and gets us a birth number and a leg and uh, I've got to work out where that leg is. So I've got a picture in the uh, <coughs> marina guide which turns around and tells you which leg is where. So if you can have a peek at that before you go in, at least you've got an idea of where you're going. Even if you're not sure what side you're setting up on. We set up on the um, port side because they turn around and give us three berths that we could go for. But unfortunately... I'd set it up on the wrong side because two of those berths were full and the one that I hadn't set up for was um, vacant when we got round there. Well, I say set up on the wrong side. We put some fenders out on both sides, really, but we were expecting the lines to be on the port side, so it was easy enough for us to change them round when we wanted to. We motored most of the way round the marina until we could get to um, the leg that we were supposed to go down, which had blue tops and an E on it. This must be the first choice of leg that they stick you on as a visitor if you're coming in. Obviously when it's full they must stick you on a different leg, but there you go. So it was down to here and then turned to port to here. So we've done virtually gone round in the square now. Now the first few, few berths where we thought we were going were three and then six. And when we looked at them, both of them had boats in. I think then we were unsure of which leg we were actually supposed to be on because there was supposed to be a choice of three berths for us and the last one being 25 will be much further down here ahead of us and probably be the better berth as well but Lisa went down below and um, she called up the marina and she asked them and they turned around and said yeah there's only 25 acres so you need to go down to number 25 well that's coming up to my port side right now so I stopped the boat and then I think well we've got to change the lines over because we were ready for the port side on so Lisa jumps into action to spin the lines from one side of the boat to the other side of the boat and I have to do the same with the stern line at the same time there's me shifting it round now now there's no wind to be had and I don't think there's any current in here so we weren't worried 
it was quite an easy change the lines around moment at the end and in all fairness when the conditions are like this you don't even need a pile of lines in your hands you can just pull up next to the uh, finger step off and hope one of you can hold the boat while the other one sorts the lines out but there you go Lisa had swapped her over already anyway if you notice just as we get up towards the end of the finger here I stick her in reverse slow the boat down virtually to a stop Lisa's ready to tie off on the front and I don't even bother moving I just get the line and I lasso it Yay! straight round no messing hold it in and then I whipped on a couple of other turns well pleased well we've landed and there's lots going on here apparently because it's uh, the Queen's Jubilee weekend so there'll be lots for us to see and do and the weather's supposed to be really fine and dandy so we should enjoy our little okay. visit to Bangor okay, you're fine. on the Saturday evening we took a hike all the way down to the uh, sailing club which isn't really that far away it's probably a 20 minute walk from the marina and when we got down there we had a few beers and met a few of the locals and they turned around and said they'd been out having a pirate's fun day at the time and here's a picture it's probably the fastest sailing uh, pirate ship around Arr. well we're going to have a nice few days break now and chill out for a little bit from here we'll probably make our way over to scotland some part of scotland anyway and then hopefully get a little bit further up into scotland so from the marina in Bangor in Northern Ireland, which is our last stop in Northern Ireland, I think so far. I'll bid you farewell and bon voyage until next time.